Hey there, political enthusiasts, future leaders, and social media mavens. By the way, that includes anyone who deals with people on a grand scale, whether it be politics, a charity, or even your own business. Welcome back to Night Owls Media, where we dive deep into the dynamic world of marketing. Today, we're unraveling a crucial thread that weaves its way through the fabric of modern day campaigns. And let's face it, any kind of business the simple and undeniable importance of a social media presence. In a world where the digital realm is the heartbeat of society, your political journey can no longer afford being confined to traditional avenues. And we're not talking about posting selfies or sharing memes. We're delving into the power, the influence, the game-changing strategies that a strategic online presence can bring to your political arsenal. From city council to the big league of national politics, the landscape has transformed. Whether you like it or not, this is how people are getting their information. So grab your coffee and your virtual megaphones as I start to unravel the reasons why having a social media presence for your political campaign isn't just an option. It is an absolute necessity for anyone aiming to navigate the intricate maze of political ambitions in the 21st century. Hashtag political presence. Hashtag the digital revolution may not be televised, but it will definitely be TikToked. Now, before I dive into this lack of a better term rant, I want you to know that this is not just about politics. I am going to talk about this in a very political landscaped manner. However, this is 100% on the same line of context as being any type of social presence, whether that be a business or a charity or an influencer or being able to tell the people of the world what you do who you are and why you do it better than somebody else. Basically, a political campaign is the exact same thing as a business campaign, as a marketing campaign. You are showing your audience not only that you are a human being and you are worthy of their attention and their vote, but also you are essentially making a video business card. We at EO7 love helping businesses and brands shine to the world. One of the things that we create for our partners is a video video business card. And this is exactly similar to really any big marketing campaign for a business and a political campaign. Let's look at it really quick. Who you are, what you do, why you do it better than everybody else, and what you want your viewers to do. That's what we strive ourselves when we create video productions for our partners. This is what the political landscape should be telling its constituents. All right, just like a 100 degree day in the middle of summer and you're at a public pool. Let's dive in. What's up, everybody? My name's Jason from EO7 Media and this channel you are on right now, Night Owls Media. We are talking about politics. Why? This is something I've never talked about before and guess what? I will probably never talk about again, but it is something near and dear to my heart because I believe in what politics can do if the right people are behind the seat and taking charge and caring about their community. And here is how it all started. Every political season, I opt to have a ballot sent home to me so I can vote from home, otherwise known as vote by mail. You know how it is when you're standing in line trying to wonder who's running for what. And of course, you know the big names, you know the president, you probably know the senators, but do you know the county coroner? Do you know the people running for secretary? Do you know all these smaller political seats that can still make a huge difference in your community that might not not be as glorified and as publicized and as advertised as the big dogs, as the big names that we come to know through every political season. Of course not, neither do I. Unless you are deep into local politics, you probably don't know every seat and every person running. This is the very reason why I opt to have this sent to me. So I can look at every single name on this ballot and do research on their issues, on their topics, and what really drives them as a human being? Do I align my own beliefs with them? Do I side with them on topics? Do I like them as a person? Do I think they will make my community better? Not just for my own stances, but for what I believe my community truly deserves. So when I used to go to the physical voting locations, I didn't know these people and I ended up voting for people that I had no clue. Maybe I just voted with them because they were the political party that I kind of sided with. This is not about my politics. This is about how we can make your political landscape, advertising, marketing better. So in short, I get the vote by mail so that I can do research on every single person. One of my favorite websites is called ontheissues.org. It is a great place to see 
immediate bullet point information about who stands for what and the links to prove what they stood for, whether they're for women's rights or against, whether they are for gun control or against, that I can quickly understand their stance. I don't have to read paragraph on paragraph on paragraph or listen to 20 minutes of a talk just to try to ascertain what the fuck they were talking about. So when it comes time for the voting for national level politicians, this website is amazing on the national level and something I implore you to look into. However, the caveat to this website is it does not handle local small politics very well and it doesn't really give me information about who is really in charge of my community. I have to dig elsewhere. And of course, my first place to go looking for people is social media. It is the easiest way to understand exactly what people are talking about. Yes, anyone running for any type of office should have a website, should have a place where we can go to learn more about them. But if you've ever gone to a political website, they all look and sound the same. They use this language that is really generic. And let's face it, really boring and I don't really get a sense from anyone's website about who they are as a person. So I go looking for them on YouTube and YouTube is the number two search engine on the planet. And people go to YouTube to research things, to learn. This is why I've always said YouTube is the library of social media. I think it is fantastic to have a social media presence on Instagram, on TikTok, on any other form. Facebook, fantastic. However, if I'm looking to truly understand a person, a, a political person, and understand their stances, understand who they are as a human being, I am going to go to YouTube. Because not only should I find their channel and learn more about them and watch their videos, I could probably watch them on other people's channels where they are all guests on podcasts or local TV shows or community meetings and things like that. I should be able to find people and ascertain who they are as a human being and on the political landscape and judge my opinion on them. And here's the problem. Literally half the people on this ballot, I couldn't find a single thing about them on YouTube. And when I couldn't find them on YouTube, I went to Google to try and find them and I found just as much information. If you don't have an online presence, you are not speaking to anybody. You know what? I'm gonna count it really quick because half doesn't really mean much if you're not seeing numbers. One, two, three, four, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There are 17 people on this ballot. Outside of the federal presidential, eight people had YouTube presences. 17 minus eight. Eight people did not. I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them on anything. That's shocking. How many positions are we going for here? 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 positions and I can't find eight people for 12 positions to see what their stances are. Federal level, we have the, the, the president. I'm taking that out of the equation. The congressional level, I am still accounting that for this. Their YouTube president is, a, is amazing. The national nominating convention of the eighth congressional district, of the five people, I could only find two. Five candidates, I could only find information on two of them. 40%. So then we get down into the county. We have people like the county board chairman, the county circuit clerk, auditor, coroner, recorder, state's attorney, board district 22, and then we get down into judicial. Judicial, I'm kind of understanding more that you don't have an outward facing social media presence. However, you should still have some type of awareness of who you are so that I can vote for you. Judicial court, judicial court, and precinct committee person. Okay, I couldn't find information on these people. I am not going to vote for someone I can't find information on. If I have no idea who they are as a person or as a political leader, I'm not gonna vote for them. I'm not going to waste a vote on someone who could truly damage my community. And in the current political landscape, damaging our community is a very real thing. And on that note, it's very easy to say, well, local politics isn't as important as the national politics. And I beg you to rethink that stance because local politics 
often help or hurt your community far more than the national ones do. Of course, there are big national federal issues that we all need to be aware of and it's landscape altering. However, people who work for your local community and your local government truly impact your local well-being and your life. This is not a video about politics. This is about the necessity for having a social media presence, especially on YouTube. So let's get back on target. Stay on target. YouTube and social media is the language of the current and future generation. If you are still using archaic forms of marketing, you are wasting your time. Signs are great for name awareness, and that's basically what social media is. So that is a fine thing to do as well as a social media presence. If you are paying for a commercial to be before a YouTube video, you're running into issues there. Don't put all your eggs into a basket if that basket is something that people want to get past faster. If people are literally counting down the seconds to skip your message to get to the video they actually want to watch, there's a problem. Have content that actually engages your audience is interesting and not force down our throats. A social media presence where I get to learn who you are as a human being, what you stand for and what you do, that will work. You need to have a social media presence. It gives you credibility. It gives you authority. It gives you social proof that you are doing what you say you're going to do. It also proves that you're a human being, that you exist, that you are someone that I can identify with. There is a very real reason why people use the terminology of that's someone I can have a beer with. Meaning that's someone that I feel like is a normal person like me that I can share my thoughts and feelings with and someone who will actually listen to me. And as a constituent and voting for someone for my local political office, that's really important for me. Showing that you're authentic, credible, and that you're knowledgeable about the political landscape and topics proves to me that you deserve to be in that office. I went searching for everyone's online presence on this ballot. I did look up Instagram, but Instagram doesn't allow me to truly understand a person as well as YouTube. YouTube allows the ability to have short form content where I can dive a little into an issue here and there or hear a political statement here and there. But it also allows me to have this long form content where I can really dig into someone's personality and their psyche and their political stances on things, whether that be a podcast, whether that be a vlog, or it could be a local community meeting where they stand up and actually talk to people face to face about what they believe is right. Now, some of these people do have a YouTube presence and that's wonderful. However, I would say more than half of the people who actually have the YouTube presence haven't posted anything in three or four years. Well, today is February 14th, 2024. So posting three or four years ago was in the beginning or the middle of COVID where having an online presence was dire because there was no face to face. But if you have not kept up with that over the years, it says to me a couple different things. One, that you don't want or care about the social media presence, which is an old philosophy because people of my generation, the generation under me, and then the very new baby generation, the these people live on social media. They live through information online. We need that kind of social human context to understand who we are talking about. The other thing is maybe they're too busy. Maybe they're too busy doing their job that they can't handle a social media presence. Tough. Every business I know, every business I work with, whether in a professional capacity or a business that I just enjoy has a social media presence. It does not mean that those businesses are social media marketing people. That's why I have a job and I do what I do. Every single one of them has some type of social media presence to let the world know that they exist, who they are, what they do. How is that any different than a political office? Especially when it comes time to voting for you. 
Now, please excuse me, I did write some notes here. The thoughts and the real points in life, talking about the community, engaging with the community, showing them out in the community. What I mean by this is, if I see one of these local politicians at a restaurant or somewhere around town that I know, of course I'm going to emotionally and psychologically engage with the fact that they are part of the community, thus endearing them to me a little bit more. But also, I wanna know who you are as a person, what you do in your personal life. For instance, Obama giving his top 20 songs of the year and asking for book recommendations. Granted, the dude can do it more now that he's out of office, but still. Having a little bit of personality goes a long way for me to identify with someone. Can I share a beer with this person? This endears me to the fact that you are a fellow human being. Now, I wouldn't expect this type of personal aspect on their websites. Websites are where you go to have a more political professional stance, but on a social media, I wanna know who you are as a person. We wanna be able to feel like we can connect with you not only as a human being or a potential leader of our community, but also as a neighbor. And here's where I'm gonna give my wife credit because as I was ranting about this last night, she gave me a great little insight and I'm gonna quote her so I get this right. If anyone can make a good video that's worth watching, just like influencers, then why can't political people make something of value and worth watching? She is not talking about high production value. In fact, she goes on to explain that very thing. If your videos are cheap and amateurly produced, they don't need to have great lighting or great sound like my husband, but the people need to come across as credible. The lighting and audio isn't as important as the credibility, how you word yourself, and how knowledgeable you are on the topics. If you sound bad, if you deliver your information incorrectly, or if you aren't knowledgeable, even if your videos are polished and beautiful, you will still come off as dumb and someone I will not vote for. Thank you, my beautiful wife. The key points of any kind of social media context for a political landscape, or really any type of landscape dealing with business or personal, is you wanna be able to come off as being approachable, being a human being, someone that someone can identify with, being credible, showing some kind of social proof, showing some type of authority in your subject matter or line of work, and being knowledgeable about the landscape that you're dealing with, whether that be politics, or business. You introduce who you are. You introduce what you can do for a community. You tell them why you can do it better than everybody else, preferably without slandering everybody else in the process. But that's a total personal note, back on topic. You talk about topics, you get your point across, and you show, don't tell, you show who you are as a human being and why I can identify with you and want to share a beer with you. You allow voters to make informed decisions, not only about who's running for office, but why they should vote for you. And here's a small marketing tip if you haven't watched a lot of our videos. Facts tell, stories sell. If you're going to tell me, here are the reasons why I should vote for you because here are the facts. However, if you're going to tell a story through your social media presence, not just through one video, but through all of them, who you are as a person, who you are as a political candidate, what values do you hold in your life? Not by telling me, but by showing me. Show me who you are. Tell me a story through the landscape of all your social media videos. I should get a feel for who you are and what you believe in, not by what you tell me, but by what I infer over all your content. Facts tell, stories sell. Quick break, I wanna tell a little story about this. Recently, I was asked why this was important at all. Why can't I just tell you the facts? Because that's what's important. If you are a business owner or a politician, you know the value of what you can bring to someone else's life. And you know that 
easily by telling the facts of something. This is an external hard drive. Being that I use these on a daily basis, I can tell you that this is a 16 terabyte, 7200 RPM, USB 3 connection with a individual power source so you're not running power from your computer. Who outside of someone who deals with technology like this on a normal basis gives a sh about any of that? With this hard drive, you can ensure that if your family photos and videos, your favorite music, and everything you've ever written or collected, all those scanned in birthday cards from grandma who's no longer with us, stays protected forever. That's a story. You're telling a story about how this affects the person. So I was sitting down with a local business who wanted us to create a video production for them. They wanted us to create a video for them telling their potential clients about all the benefits that working with them has to offer. They help with this technical thing, this technical thing, this technical thing. These are facts. As an explainer video on your website, by diving in deeper into the information, this is a great idea. As something you wanna put on social media or your first face with potential new people, this will turn people off faster than anything else. So here's the example I gave to this potential business as we were sitting in their office talking about their work. So I have a mop and I have to sell this mop. What is the best way to sell a mop? And they laughed at me. They said, a mop? Well, who cares about a mop? And I said, anyone who wants to clean a floor will care about a mop. Sure, you can just go to a store and buy any old mop. But when you're there, you notice that there's 15 different brands. Which one works best? You might say that any of them work good. Just like a doctor's office. Any of them could be fine. Why should I pick one over the other? So. We go online and we look at two different commercials. One commercial tells you about the technology inside the mop head, about how it grips dirt better and takes it up and leaves a shine and, and the chemical compounds inside the woven factor and how the ergonomic grip of the stick allows you to, to move a little bit easier and it, it, it's green because it's easy. You've already lost interest. I guarantee you're sitting at home watching this video right now and you just phased out because you don't give a Unless you're a mop enthusiast and then rock on, I really want to hear your life journey. Or we see this commercial. A young child is playing with toys on the floor. They have some snacks next to them that they reach over and grab and put in their mouth. The snacks aren't on a plate. They're on the floor. They drop a little bit of jam from their peanut butter and jelly sandwich and they bend down and lick it off the floor. We look up and see mom over in the next room looking over at her baby. She looks over. She smiles, goes back to what she was doing. She turns away, not because she doesn't care, but because she knows the mop she used works so well that her baby is safe and her family is safe. When you are selling, you aren't selling the product. You're instead selling the experience of the consumer using your product. Facts tell, stories sell. Let's get back on topic. There is a reason why presidents and people in the larger landscape of social awareness have such a huge social media presence. You don't need to have a large marketing campaign who you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars to. You don't need to spend money on social media. You just need to do it. On that note, I will argue forever until I am hard proven otherwise that YouTube is hands down the best social media that you can use for your business, for your marketing, for your political campaigns. It is a search engine. People use it to learn more about things. Instagram is wonderful for what it does and the audience it's targeting. TikTok is wonderful for what it does and the audience it's targeting. Facebook is really good for communities and remembering everyone's birthdays. I, I'm sorry, everyone on my friends list. 
and family. YouTube is a search engine and it's linked to Google. If you are Googling someone, it's also going to connect you to YouTube. The more YouTube videos you have, the more SEO you have, the more your name will come up when I am searching for you, when I'm voting for people I've never heard of. YouTube allows you to have short content. It allows you to have medium length content. It allows you to have long form content. You can have multi hour long podcasts talking about the political stances that you hold dear. You can introduce friends and other constituents and local brands and businesses that you want to show that you're a part of this community. You can build a library of knowledge, authenticity, credibility, social proof, and in other words, who you are, what you do, why you do it better than everybody else, and what should I do now? In a cultural climate that we live in now, where a person would rather click on a video to learn something than read a paragraph of text, why wouldn't you make yourself and your brand more available and more easily accessible to people to explain why they should choose you? Sure, we might ascertain from your website that you have one stance or another, or we could listen to you for a couple minutes and get to feel who you are as a person. You know, if I wanna have a beer with you. There's a reason that if people want to learn something, they call it the YouTube University. So really what it boils down to is why isn't there more social media presence from these people who want to run for office. If they want me to vote for them, if they want to be a part of my community, then be a part of my community. You going to the library for a photo opportunity for a local newspaper isn't as effective as you just sitting down in front of a camera or talking to someone else and posting that online, getting me to understand who you are as a person, your stances, your credibility, your knowledge on certain topics. And I am more apt to listen to you, to engage with you and to understand who you are, not only as a political aspect, but as a human being. And that's what social media is. Again, this isn't just about politics. This is about your business. This is also why I am doing this today. So you understand who I am, how I think, and how I operate as a business or am as a person. I love to help other people. As our business, EO7 Media, we love to help brands shine. We love to help them show the world what they already know and how awesome they are, but they can't tell the world how awesome they are because they don't know how, and that's okay. Because you know how to do what you do so damn well, we can take it over from there. All right, that felt a little more like an ad, not what I was intending with this, but you get the idea. You need to set up a social media presence. Do you need to be on all of them? No, you don't. You need to set up a few that A, you like being on, because if you don't like a certain social media, you're not gonna wanna post there. And that's just gonna drag you down and you're never gonna post. Two, who are you trying to reach? Are you trying to reach a certain demographic? Use that demographic social media platform of choice. If you're wanting to do more photo posts, Instagram is great. If you're wanting to do more community posts, Facebook is awesome. If you're wanting to do more fun, entertaining, videos do TikTok, but I implore you to always, always do YouTube because YouTube is where people go to learn. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you're having an amazing day today, no matter what day you're watching this. I really hope this helps someone out there. Feel free to leave a comment below. If you agree with me, fantastic. If you don't, let's have a conversation. I try to respond to absolutely everyone who brings something of value to the conversation. Be sure you do something awesome today for you, your business, or for the people around you. And just like I tell my crew and I tell myself every morning, be better. Hashtag social media strategies. Hashtag digital revolution. Hashtag political presence. Hashtag I'm going back to work because I have partner videos I need to work on today. 